And so this is the home of uh, the White Tigers. You actually, uh, if you go through uh, Rob's archives on his uh, Facebook page or his YouTube page, you'll see video of when then they were Cubs. Yep. Uh, you were out here when they were just running around my backyard. Yep. Um, but yeah, Malai and Tanju. Uh, Malai and Tanju. Uh, right here Where is Malai. Uh, means older. Um, and Tanju means younger brother. They are right twins. Right over here. Um, so we kind of named them older. Usually if, you, if John two. gets closer, they'll come yeah. right over to him. Yeah. You, you won't believe how big these yeah. cats are. Yeah. I mean, they're just... Incredible. So again, um, education-wise, we, we, we teach a lot about genetics and uh, uh -huh. recessive genes and why the color variants are there. Uh, but we also, we, we give people an accurate history of the white tiger uh, because a lot of people just have, um, they just buy what the activists throw at them, with, that they're all inbred, they're all uh, non-viable for conservation because their bloodlines are messed up and they don't really exist. A lot of people even try to convince you that they are man-made, which they're not. However, they were only found in India, uh, naturally, uh, in the Bengal population. Um, but you know, now we know that there are no subspecies. The tigers are all the same. Um, what we see in the differences in the different countries is the same thing that you see in race. Uh, so it's just breeding populations that have been separated that look different, the same reason that people do. Um, so we refer to the subspecies now as types, which is basically the same as race based on geography. Um, so in uh, captivity, there's no difference uh, in any of the tigers. Um, and find, in fact, you find a lot of the cover, color variants in other types of tigers now as well because of the breeding that has been done. But I, will want, I do want to point out that a lot of genetic studies have been done. Um, you can uh, look up Brian Davis in uh, A&M University who's been cataloging the big cats for, uh, especially the tigers for several years. Uh, if you want to get an accurate account of, of the genetics of the, the captive tiger population, uh, look him up. But the fact is, the, the, the captive population of tigers is more diverse than the wild population at this point. Um, so realistically, it's, it's the problem that we have is with the wild population. It's not with the fact that we have so many. The fact that we have so many in captivity is probably what's going to save the tigers in the long run. Um, so if, you were, if you're talking about genetic diversity being what's, what makes them more viable for conservation, then the captive tiger is more viable for conservation because it's more diverse. So I'll put it that way. Um, so you know, at this point, there are a lot of color variations. Uh, you, you can look up the work of Joseph Marcan in northern Florida. He's got a lot of different colorations. There are several facilities across the country. A lot of work was done with uh, Siegfried and Roy as well. Uh, but make no mistake about it, these are not mongrels and they're not uh, non-viable. They're very genetically sound. Um, tigers that uh that could end up being the saving grace however i would i would like to also, also say that the problem has not been solved in the wild the population is not increasing it's actually uh, it's basically in a stalemate it hasn't uh it hasn't changed in the past decade or two uh, in fact the other big cats other than the tiger are still decreasing in numbers um so realistically, we need to stop talking about where they belong and start talking about whether or not we want them to exist, because that's reality. Existence over e extinction is basically the bottom line. Uh, that's where our hearts are for existence over extinction. Um, I don't. I wish that uh, we could put them all back in the wild and, and believe that they would all survive. But um, the current state of the world, it's not going to happen. You know, we got a lot of work to do before that's even possible. So until then, we just have to make sure that we keep a good, healthy population in captivity. So I'm trying to approach this with a view of science. I want to give everybody a different perspective. I'm not. I am I'm very careful to say this, and I want people to understand. I am not advocating captive wildlife. I'm just saying that, that you, we are being misled as to what is actually going on in the private sector. And I want people to understand there's a lot of important work going on. And don't be fooled by the agendas that are being put in front of you. So, um, so it's not about me advocating. It's not about me defending. It's about reality. The reality is science says these are more diverse than the wild populations. Science says that if things don't change in the wild, they're not going to exist. Science says we have a future if we keep a good, healthy population here. So. Amen. I'm done preaching about that. <laughs> <laughs>